Last time on Graph Theory, we took a look at Breath First Search. Today, we're going to look at its cousin, the Depth First Search. You're watching episode 5 of Graph Theory. Hello and welcome back to Graph Theory. With your background on Breath First Search, Hopefully, today's episode won't be too complicated for you. We're going to be looking at Depth First Search, which is actually a remarkably similar algorithm. Instead of, you know, spreading out, we're going to go as far as we can go and then come back and go as far as we can go again. That is, of course, what it means by Depth First, because, well, it goes as deep as it possibly can. Instead of Breath First Search, which tries to spread out, as much as it possibly can. So this is going to be, you know, a theme for the rest of this video. Basically, since you know Breath First Search, I'm going to just keep comparing Depth First Search to Breath First Search, and hopefully you'll be able to, you know, understand better. Really, there are only two differences between Breath First Search and Depth First Search. Depth First Search uses a stack instead of a queue. In addition to that, Depth First Search actually delays the marking as visited to a later point. The reason for these two changes might not be too evident at this point, so let's jump into the trace itself, and you should be able to see why this happens. We begin by creating an empty stack as well as a list, which of course will remember which nodes have been visited. Just like Breath First Search, we begin by picking any node we like and adding it to the stack. The difference here is we don't mark it as visited just yet. Like I said, we're going to delay the whole act of marking as visited. The loop is very similar, at least the condition is the same. We have to keep looping as long as there are things in the stack. However, the loop body is slightly different. We're going to have to check to see if that particular node we've just popped is actually a visited node. And if it isn't, then we can do our computation. The reason why we need to do this check is because now we've actually delayed marking nodes as visited. And because of that, we can't just jump in and process a node without knowing whether it's been visited or not. If that node we're looking at hasn't been visited, then we mark it as visited. Then we perform our computation. So yeah, you can see that the order of things is slightly different from breath first search. When you're done with computation, you simply look at all the neighbors of this current node and then push them onto the stack. Of course, once again, the difference being, don't mark them as visited just yet. That's it for the first iteration. Let's now continue tracing to the subsequent iterations. Pop the topmost item, check to see if it's been visited. In this case, it's not. So let's go ahead and do our processing. Mark it as visited, and when we're done, we look at all the neighbors and basically push all the neighbors onto the stack. We move on to the next iteration. Once again, we pop the topmost node of the stack and do the same computation. Notice what's happening here. Because we're using a stack, the last node added is always the next node visited. And that is actually what gives us the behavior of the search becoming depth first. It's going to go as far as it can go until it can't go anymore. Then it's going to backtrack a little. And then it's going to try and go as far as it can once again. Now, the more eagle-eyed among you will have already noticed something terribly inefficient about this algorithm. Many already visited nodes get pushed into the stack anyway, resulting in a large stack and many redundant iterations. In fact, there is a simple workaround to this problem. Out of the neighboring nodes, only push the ones that have not yet been visited. This is interesting because the algorithm with the redundancy is actually corroborated by many other sources. I couldn't tell you why. At any rate, I guess the most important thing you need to know is that you can work around this redundancy by implementing an additional check. So with that in mind, let's move on to spanning trees. Just like breath first search, you can create a spanning tree by connecting the lines as you traverse the graph. For this trace, I'm actually going to use the modified depth first search algorithm we've just talked about. As you can see, this doesn't entirely eliminate all the redundancies in the stack. It definitely helps, 
But unfortunately, because we mark nodes as visited pretty late down the line, we can't eliminate all the redundancies. So right, now that we have a spanning tree, let's actually reorganize it so that it looks like a tree. Now, compare this to the spanning tree for the breadth first search. Notice the difference. The spanning tree generated by depth first search is taller and branches out less, while the breadth first search spanning tree is short and wide. This shouldn't be a surprise, since that is the very difference between a breadth first and a depth first algorithm. These trees just give us a visual confirmation of that fact. But alright, that's it. That's all there is for this episode. We've taken a look at depth first search. We have tried to understand how it's different from breadth first search. Then we've taken a look at the spanning tree, which of course confirms the intuitive understanding that, well, the search is a depth first one. That's all there is for this episode. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may want to check out a playlist of the other videos in this series. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.